PyScript is more than just a coding language. It's a key that enables traders to create their own custom indicators and strategies. This tutorial is designed to walk you through real world examples of how these scripts can be used. We'll go step by step through fundamental concepts and simple examples, right through to advanced techniques and modeling. If you can complete this session, you'll have a solid foundation of how you can design, test, and refine your trading hypotheses in a real-time charting environment. A simple moving average indicator. We're starting at the foundation with what is essentially the hello world of PineScript, the simple moving average, or SMA indicator. If you have some experience already, you might want to skip ahead to the next section, or for beginners, this will get you quickly up to speed. I'll dive right into the coding process, beginning by defining the version to v5. We give our SMA life by naming it and setting the overlay to true, allowing SMA to be directly posted onto our price chart, as opposed to being displayed in a separate chart underneath. Next, we introduce an input for the length variable. This is where the settings come into play, allowing users to customize the indicator by defining the period of time that their simple moving average looks back over. The period is almost dynamic based on the time frame of the chart, so a 200 SMA will be an average of the closing price over the last 200 days on a daily chart. If it changes to minutes, then it will be 200 minutes on the minute chart. We use PineScript's built-in technical analysis library, which includes various moving averages, including the SMA. Our final task is to plot the SMA line and set the line color to blue. To bring this indicator into our chart, Simply copy the code into TradingView's Pine Editor and click Add to Chart. The code for this and all the other examples is available in a blog post linked in the description, and it's also open sourced on GitHub. As you can see, we've got a lovely, rounded, lagging indicator for the simple moving average, and we've created our first customizable technical analysis indicator, which we can now build on top of. Example two, creating a strategy from an indicator. Now, let's look at one of the most famous trend-following strategies of all time, the moving average crossover. This will require not one, but two of our elegantly crafted moving averages, which we learned about in the previous example. A short moving average, this closely follows the actual price, evening out any periods of volatility, and a long moving average, a slower moving average, which is based on more historical data to calculate a longer term value. The default settings, which are the first, value passed into the input function are set to when the 30 SMA crosses the 200 SMA. So on a daily chart, it would be when the 30 day average price crosses the 200 day average price, indicating a bullish environment for us to go long. We plot these lines on the chart to visualize what it's doing. These types of strategies often require fine tuning and fit into historical price volatility to avoid overtrading. The long condition is set up using a built-in technical analysis function called a TA crossover. The short condition is the exact opposite of that using TA cross under. We then set up a conditional if statement to get in and out of the trades. This is an example of a flip-flap strategy which switches from long to short, but is always carrying some form of directional set exposure. Let's go ahead and plot this on a price chart, and now we can move on to the strategy tester. We have an overview and a performance summary. This shows that the strategy is more or less break even when trading the daily chart on the S&P 500. If we go into the settings, users can adjust the moving averages to fine tune their settings without needing to modify the code. It also, in the properties, there are some options to improve the back testing by adding things like slippage and commission fees. Example number three identifying price channels. Imagine you want to scale into a position on a particular asset. There are a few ways to go about this. You could uh, spread out your investments over time, which is known as dollar cost averaging or TWAPing. Alternatively, you could automate the process with a bot or a trading bot that follows some kind of volume weighted average price or VWAP. Or you could try and figure out using a chart when the asset is below its fair value and buy it when the price is particularly appealing. To pinpoint its fair value, we'll be relying on some key tools such as moving averages and the ATR, or average true range. Instead of the simple moving average, we're going to be using the exponential moving average, the EMA, because it's quicker to respond to price changes. 
The ATR or average true range gives us a heads up of how volatile the asset is and suggests how much the price should deviate from what we consider fair value. Here's our game plan. We set up a strategy where we plot on a fair value line and decide how far the price should be but below this before we start to build our position. For our strategy, we'll work with a flexible multiplier, which will allow us to adjust this factor. Note that this is an input.float rather than input.int or integer, which allows us to fine tune it with decimals. Next, we use the EMA and ATR to figure out our support and resistance zones. Think of them as like elastic boundaries that help us identify when to enter a trade. And we can plot this and we get an indicator, which is a bit like a Bollinger Band, which looks better on a chart than it does in the back test. We'll draw these key lines on our chart, one for fair value, one for support, and one for resistance. And then we get to pick the colors. We're using RGBA values, which is red, green, and blue. And then the final value is alpha transparency. It shows how kind of see-through the color is. Finally, we can test this by turning it into a strategy. Our strategy goes long when the price drops below the support level. We'll wrap up the trade when the price either jumps into the resistance level or after 30 days, whichever comes first. Let's deploy a strategy to help spot those moments where the price is a bit of a bargain, perfect for scaling into a longer term investments. Example four, building a breakout sniper. All right, let's start looking at something a little bit more fun to trade. A breakout is when an asset zigzags within a range for a period of time and then suddenly it skyrockets out of that range, top of that range, and this often coincides with increased volume and volatility. Price goes into discovery and everyone gets rich. Well, not really, but you get the gist. Now, we need a script to catch these breakouts and see if we can make a profit in the backtest. First up, we decide on the period to look back over to check previous highs and lows. We then use some more built-in technical analysis functions called TA.highest and TA.lowest to find the top and bottom of our price during that period of time. Then we plot these highs and lows on the chart to visualize what it is we're doing. We can then define a breakout and a breakdown condition on if the price is equal to a high or low respectively. If our asset's price climbs to the highest point of our look back period, a breakout becomes true and we buy the asset going long. If it drops to the lowest point, that's a breakdown and we sell or go short. Either way, we hold on for 30 days and then say goodbye to the trade. Let's plot this on a chart. Spoiler alert, trying this on something like the S&P 500 daily chart, which loves to bounce back and forth within a range, might not be the thrill you're looking for. However, throw the strategy on something wild like Bitcoin, and you start to see profits on both the long and short side. Breakouts work best on volatile speculative assets because these assets experience the rapid and large price movements, creating the potential for significant gains. Traders know this and closely watch these assets, betting that the initial surge will lead to further upward momentum, hence making a quick and often substantial profits possible. Example five, building a fear and greed index. I have an unfortunate permeable bias when it comes to digital assets. So in this next example, I want to create an indicator that warns me of periods where markets are at irrational extremes. The indicator uses multiple data points to create a fear and greed index. This will be overlaid on a chart to create a vertical overlay. Let's dive into the code. After the standard declarations, we have two inputs for customizable fear and greed boundaries. We're using RSI, which is Relative Strength Index, as a starting point. This is an oscillating indicator which ranges between 0 and 100, whether an asset is oversold or overbought. Then there is a fair value indicator using the close divided by the 14 EMA. There's a volume indicator using the current volume compared to the high and low over a period of 90 days or whatever time frame the chart is set to. And finally, there is a volatility indicator built around standard deviation. We combine these indicators with a formula to create our fear and greed index. The RSI minus 50 multiplied by the fair value indicator, the volume indicator, and the standard deviation indicator. As the user defined extremities of this range, we plot semi-transparent vertical lines in either red for fear or green for greed using the BG color and color.new uh, functions, which allows us to plot these kind of semi-transparent lines on the chart. 
This gives us a nice indicator as to when the market has reached the extremes in regards to price, volatility, and volume. Example number six, Gaussian process regression. So far, I've been looking at lagging indicators, but now we're going to venture into something more ambitious and try and forecast future prices using GPR, Gaussian process regression. This probabilistic technique aims to predict time series data and is useful when the historical data is riddled with noise and complex nonlinear relationships. This is considerably more complex than previous examples, so let's look at each component individually. First off, we have to initialize the GPR indicator with tunable settings for the lookback period, the prediction horizon, the length scale, and the noise variance, giving you the flexibility and the user's flexibility to tailor the GPR to their specific data set. We then introduce the radial bias function, RBF kernel, to gauge the similarity across the data points. This brings us to the kernel matrix, a component that captures the covariance of the data points reflecting their inner relationships. PyScript executes across each data point in time series data. Here we have bar state dot is first to create some logic for the first iteration. The script organizes training and test indices, assembles an identity matrix weighted by the noise variance, and formulates a prediction kernel, which essentially links past data to future forecasts. The script goes on to process the data, smoothing out the closing price with the moving average, and fine-tuning the training outcomes by comparing them to actual closing prices. For the prediction phase, we combine the prediction kernel with the training results to project the expected future price trend. Finally, we plot this data. The regression points map to the historical data in pink, while the forecast points sketch out the yellow path of future predictions. While GPR isn't a crystal ball, it's a powerful tool in quantitative trading, offering a statistical lens to view past price behavior and project future trends. Check out this video of the model being applied to the Bitcoin One Minute chart. I hope you've enjoyed these PineScript examples and it inspires you to go out and create your own strategies and indicators. If you want to stay in touch and learn more about trading digital assets, then I have a free newsletter at pacini.substack.com. Thank you.